Hello people, I'm your host Tyler Felix and this is Past the Parsley. I hope you've been having a wonderful week. We have a dumb night of fights with Jake Paul versus Ben Askren. Which I can't believe that that fight's actually happening and I can't believe that this will be Ben's biggest payday of his entire career. What is the world we are living in? (laughs) This is ridiculous, but... I'm going to touch on that for a bit, and then I'm also going to break down uh, the Robert Whitaker versus Kelvin Gastelum fight, or that card, I should say. Off to a nice and boring start, people. So, like, I guess we could start with Jake Paul. I feel like uh, it's pretty widespread that everybody hates Jake, which I'm definitely in that in that realm, especially with just the whole thing with the press conference and all that stuff, man. I mean the like the dude's a fucking walking meme. And then him saying that he has uh the early signs of C T E is kind of like what? Like first of all No, you don't. Like, I could tell you that right now. Like, no, you don't. Because it's very hard uh, in a person that's living to to detect that, right? There's there's only been a couple cases of people who have been diagnosed with CTE and have been living, right? That most of the time to check it, you need to literally cut open their head and then look at their brain. So, obviously, Jake Paul is full of shit. I mean, he's said a lot of things that are complete lies, like, such as that if Ben Askren goes for a takedown, that his uh, fight purse will be stripped, and that's not in the contract at all. That was just a, just a blatant lie. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, like, just fucking Jake Paul's in... Like, I... I just feel like he looks at guys like Connor and stuff like that. And he just thinks, oh, this is how combat sports works. You know, I get up here, I talk a bunch of shit, and then I just knock dudes out, right? Nice. But it's like, uh, no, Jake, that's not how (laughs) this sport works. Because when he has to walk to uh, that ring all that shit talking and everything that he said and everything that he said he's going to do to to Ben let that all come crashing on top of him as soon as he puts on those fucking gloves and starts to make that fucking walk man he's going to feel that fucking pressure and this is really the first real fight that, that Jake will ever be in. Will not ever be in, but has ever been in, right? Because, I mean, <clears throat> I assume that he'll continue fighting. Because, like, that is one thing. That Jake is a clown, Jake is a meme, but he's taking boxing very seriously, right? I mean, he's dedicated the past two or three years of his life to boxing, right? Like, he's been... He's he's been working, like, his his uh, ass off, so it's not like Jake isn't taking this serious, right? He's making uh, the full kind of leap where I feel like his brother Logan didn't really, like... But then Jake... Jake legitimately wants to be like an actual boxer so i can definitely give him props in that one field right is that he's taking this very seriously but just like the guys he's sparring and like stuff like that like that uh word has kind of came out that anybody that even cracks his kid once he just immediately just kind of just fucking circles out and just which, granted, it, 
if you've never been punched, right, you've never been rocked, it's like that's going to be how you react because it's just natural. And then one thing that Jake hasn't felt in like a professional bout is being pushed into those deep, those deep waters where he's dead fucking tired and he still has this man that's in front of him that's trying to knock his fucking head off. It's like that is one of the most scariest feelings that anybody could ever go through and Jake has never felt that and you can never recreate that, right? That it doesn't matter how much you spar or how tired you get in sparring and it 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 just doesn't feel the same as you know actually fighting so this will bring me to my first bet because <clears throat> there's a lot of dummies who are betting on Jake Paul to fucking win and they reference these sparring videos where he's literally beating up tuna cans just random guys that he's paying like a hundred bucks and he's beating up those fucking guys it's like who fucking cares right and he knocked out Nate Robinson, who's a basketball player, and at that, one of the smallest basketball players of all time, right? So it's like, and Nate was super nervous, and he was just rushing forward recklessly, and Jake Paul was just throwing that right hand, just overhand right, just overhand right, and, and he was just catching him, just rushing in, like, recklessly, because if you go back and watch that that fight, it's like Jake Jake Paul didn't really look that good. He was just fighting somebody who has never fought, right? So it's like I really don't get and and uh, like there's some fighters like Shab has like fucking came out and said that he think that he thinks Paul will uh, win. And he's citing, like, sparring videos. It's like, bro, you should know more than anybody else that sparring doesn't mean anything, man. Like, what the fuck is sparring? Like, that it's completely different. It's completely different. That there's zero pressure. He's, like, the guys he's fighting in these clips are fucking tuna cans, right? And then all of the... Like, all of the real guys that he's been actually sparring, like, the real fighters, none of those fucking videos come out, and I feel like that's because he's probably getting pieced up. <laughs> probably getting pieced up, or they're just going super-duper light. That, <laughs> yeah, no. That I really don't see Jake Paul winning this, which a lot of people think that Ben Askren, like, doesn't have a chin because he got KO'd in, like, 14 seconds, but the opposite's true. Like, Ben Askren has an amazing chin, and he is a fighter, right? Ben Askren is a fucking fighter. And he is going to push Jake, and he is going to give him the toughest fight of his entire life. And I just see Jake folding. I don't see Jake... That if Jake can't knock out Ben, I just see Jake... Uh, I just see Ben just wearing him down. And just... By the fourth, fifth round, that is just going to be, like, all fucking Ben Askren. Which a, a lot of people are dissing his, like, boxing. But you can't look at his past fights, right? Because Ben Askren, in his... MMA career hasn't really boxed, right? Because his style of striking was just to set up that fucking takedown. So it's like all of these combos and all these punches that, that he's throwing, like you can't really take that into a, a uh, like count because he's not boxing, right? He's looking, he's looking for that shot and he's just throwing out punches just to close that fucking distance. Where I see Ben Askren. I mean, and like one thing too that a lot of people are like, oh, Paul, you know, he looks really great. Like he's big, blah, blah, blah. He has a ton of power. And it's just like, hello, Ben Askren has been sparring Tyron Woodley for the better part of a decade. 
Tyron fucking Woodley. So it's just like I, I, I'm pretty sure that Tyron Woodley is a better boxer and more powerful than Jake Paul. I would bet my goddamn fucking life on that. I mean, come on, people. Like this isn't like this isn't the first time that Ben has in uh, like countered like a person with punching power. Which I feel like that's the only thing that Jake Ball has. Which they said, which there's a lot of people like fucking Rogan. Like Rogan thinks that Paul will like win, which is like, what? Like, are you kidding me? Like, why? Because this kid has good fucking footwork, like in the gym, and he's knocking out tuna cans in the gym. It's like, why does that matter? Why does that matter? Like,. <laughs> Because his movement, a a like against Nate Robinson, was just dog shit. Like it wasn't there, but Nate was just a terrible fighter because he's never fought. So he he could easily just slip his fucking punches, but it's not like he he looked phenomenal. Like he just looked good for a YouTuber. He didn't look good for a boxer, right? Where if you break him down as a boxer, he didn't look that great. If you break him down as a YouTuber, he fucking looked amazing. Which I feel like that's where a lot of people are betting on uh, Jake here because all that to say that Jake is the favorite. Jake, I think, is a minus like 180 favorite. And Ben Askren is a plus 146, which that'll get me to my first pick. So my first lock of uh, this week is Ben Askren at plus 146. I feel like those odds are just disrespectful to put Ben Askren as the underdog because Jake Paul is beating up tuna cans and fucking sparring and he knocked out a basketball player, the smallest basketball player in, in the last 20 years. I mean, it's like, it's like, come on, people. Like, like, use your fucking head. Like, use your fucking head. I don't care that Ben is a straight-up wrestler. Like, that doesn't matter, right? Because the aspects of fighting carry over. Like, as far as being mentally tough, as far as eating punches, like, as far as being so fucking tired, but yet you keep on pushing, right being fucking rocked but you keep on pushing right like those those skill sets carry over right mental toughness carries over which i feel like that's what this fight is going to come down to and i feel like jake also knows uh like that because every time he gives a prediction he pushes he like pushes it back like where he was gonna start him in like the first minute and then it was oh it's it's first round and then he recently got got ass and then he just pretty much said oh it'll be a tough fight and then i hope that i can stop him in like round two or round three or like some shit like that and it's like oh okay okay so then you realize that that this fight won't be fucking easy like (laughs) <laughs> and just look at how calm Ben is too which most of the time the cal- the calmest fighter wins and Jake Paul has put so much pressure on his shoulders like Jake Paul has to win this fight right that he's built it up so much he's put so much pressure on this fight he he built a bend to all these casuals as some dog shit fighter that if ben goes out there and he starches jake that's going to be terrible for jake so he has a lot of pressure and i think ben is i mean he's came out and like said that he's just doing this for for fun and because it's going to be a a shit ton of money so it's like ben has been super calm like ben doesn't give two fucks and that's a really great thing because (laughs) jake paul is going I, i guarantee i can't wait to see that walk because it's either going to do one of two things right that pressure like it either breaks you or just makes you 
pre uh, form like that much better. Which I mean, Jake, uh, Jake Paul, I don't think has been in like a main e uh, like fan fight. This will be his first fight where he's the main show where everybody paid to fucking see him lose. That's why everybody's buying this fight to like watch him lose. <laughs> so it'll 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 be interesting. Like this this fight is such a meme, but then it's also like very interesting because. I have been as a significant favorite <clears throat> that the only way that I see Jake Paul winning is by knocking out Ben, which is going to be very hard because if you look at that Nate fucking Robinson fight, right? Like Jake Paul, like didn't look that great. Didn't look that great. Like Nate Robinson looked terrible, was rushing forward, was so nervous, was just rushing forward with these wild, reckless punches and then Jake Paul would just fire that fucking right hand. And then he would catch him. Like, it's not like... It's like it's not like Jake is like this skillful boxer. Which I feel like that's what a lot of people are painting him out to uh, be. Because, he, because of some cleverly edited fucking sparring videos. Which, like, that's a thing that, like, people don't realize. Is that everything you post on... Instagram and all these sparring videos, they're posting the fucking highlights, right? They're they're posting the best moments. Like if if Jake has gotten dropped or anything like that, like they're not going to fucking post that. There was um a fighter that came out, I forgot who, but he said, you know, that he busted him up and like he fucking bloodied his uh his uh like nose and Jake was just kind of running. Which I feel like in this fight, I think is exactly going to happen. That everybody wants to be a, like, a, like, fighter or, like, a boxer until you get fucking cracked in the face, man. Until you get fucking rocked. Then that's when you really see. Where a lot of people think that Ben has, like, no fucking power, right? And it's like, no, 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 no. Because if you, if like you watch Ben just hit, like he has fucking power, like when he tries to actually box. But in his previous fights, he doesn't because he's such an amazing wrestler. So why is he going to sit there and box with guys? Right? It, like this is just, it's just kind of ridiculous that everybody's just dissing Ben. Like including fighters. And it's just like, what? Like, how are you? Like, what? I don't, like, I don't understand it. Like, I honestly don't understand it. it. It's, like, I could see why all of these casuals and stuff, like, say that. But it's like, you know, for, like, Rogan to, like, think that, you know, that Jake Paul is just going to destroy Ben. Because of some sparring videos guy. Because he put some shit on Instagram. What? Like, are you kidding? So dumb. But anyways, that's that fight. And then on that same card, Frank Mir is fighting Steve Cunningham. It's like, uh, first of all, how did that get sanctioned? Frank Mir has never boxed, and Steve Cunningham is a former champion. It It's just like, what? Like, what? That's so dumb. And I feel like Mir is going to get fucking utterly destroyed. Utterly destroyed. Because Frank Mir, his boxing was always his his uh, his weak game, right? I mean, he, he always had decent boxing. He has a lot of power. But, I mean, he's been knocked out ten times. Ten times. Which, I mean, that's not a, like, knock. But it's like, when he's gotten caught, it's been, it's been on the feet, right, and it's been against decent boxers, so it's like, it's just weird that Frank Mir is just doing this, I mean, I'm sure that it's the same thing uh, with Ben, that Frank Mir, this would probably be a massive uh, payday, and it's probably a lot more than what he'd get from Bellator or 1FC or PFL, 
or something like that. So I guess that that's probably why he's uh, like doing it. But he's supposed to fight Steve Cunningham. It's like, like how is like I don't understand how these fights get sanctioned. Like Frank Mir has never boxed ever, and he's facing a former world champion, right? Connor has never boxed ever, and then fights the greatest of all time, and these fights get sanctioned. Like he fights Floyd, that doesn't what? That's kind of ridiculous. That's kind of like it's 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 insane. Where a lot of these these uh states they they just kind of loop all these sports in uh, like once if you have experience in one com com uh, like bad sport they kind of carry it over where it's like yeah i mean that like there is a, a lot of stuff that carries over but if you're an o and o boxer like ben right has never boxed and he's about to fight jake paul who has two fucking fights so that makes sense right now, if Ben went and fought a yeah, former world champion and shit like that, that would make zero sense. And the same thing with, like, Mir. Which, Cunningham is definitely past his his uh, his uh, prime. I don't think he's fought in, like, two years. But it's like, the same thing goes for uh, Mir. That Mir's, you know, probably eight years past his fucking prime. So it's like... This fight just makes no sense. Like, that entire card. And then there's Raycon, who I don't even know who the fuck that is. Uh, but I guess he's some Spanish, like, pop star. And uh, he's going to fight Joe Fournier, who I thought was a le legitimate boxer. But looking at him, he's a millionaire that beats up fucking tuna cans and then thinks that he's a fucking boxer. So this guy's not a real boxer, he's like, uh, he's like a Jake Paul type, like, you know, just fighting a bunch of tuna cans, and then he thinks that he's a real fucking boxer, but, so he's fighting that guy, because they got into a fight at a club, it's like, what, why is this card so stupid, this fight's so stupid, man, like, it's just, uh it's an entire night of fights, but, because it's so stupid, it's a fucking spectacle, right? That if it was just meh, just average, then nobody would fucking watch this shit. But it's so outrageous, so dumb, so stupid that everyone's like, I'll fucking watch it. I'll fucking watch it, man. <laughs> and I am a part of that crowd. And I'm going to be rooting for Ben. He's my pick. I bought a Ben Askren t-shirt, baby. Fucking rep him. So, yeah, so, I guess I'll go through my picks really quick. So, my first lock is Ben Askren at plus 146. I really like those odds because for Ben Askren to be an underdog is kind of ridiculous. I could understand if the odds were even, but for Ben Askren to be an underdog is kind of like phew, the disrespect guy. So, hammer it, Don, hammer it, home. On Ben Askren. Then my next two bets will be for this UFC card, which, by the way, gives that ten, so it gives the same time as the as the Jake Paul card, which is annoying. It's like you had you had this shit at three last week because of fucking WrestleMania, and you didn't want to compete, but then this Jake Paul fucking Ben Askren fight, just like, ah, fuck fight fans, right? Fuck anybody that cares that we're just gonna show at the same exact time, you fucking cunts. Like, you could've easily just started this card at, like, 7, then it would be perfect. But nope, it's at 10, so now I'm gonna have to split screen this shit, try to watch two two cards at the same time, yeah, this is just stupid. But anyways, my so my first bet is Ben Askren. My second bet is for Andre Arlovsky versus Chase Sherman, plus 
plus 112 to go under two and a half rounds. And my reasoning for this is uh, Chase, if you take out his uh, bare knuckle fights, which those are boxing fights. Like, I don't know why they're including it in his thing on topology because those are boxing fights. Those are not mixed martial arts fights. But if you take those out he has he has finished his last four fights and hasn't been in to the third round since 2018 so he uh he is a finisher he he tends to go out there and he either finishes or he gets finished so i see this uh and andre has been known to not have necessarily the best chin he is coming off a, a loss. He lost in the second round, but before that, he was on a two-fight win streak against Felipe Linz and Tanner Bozier. So, and then the fight before that, he got knocked out in like 30 seconds. So, I, for that reasoning, I see either guy winning here, but I don't see it going all three rounds. So that is why I have that pick. So it's plus 112 under two and a half rounds for the uh, Andre versus Chase Sherman fight. Then my third bet is Robert Whitaker versus Kelvin Gastel. This is an awesome fight, but I, I have it plus 112 under four and a half rounds. And my, and, uh, my reasoning for this is that both of these guys are definitely finishers, but they haven't gotten finishes lately. So I feel like that's that's why these, these odds are kind of a little skewed, because Robert hasn't got um, a finish since 2017, and Kelvin hasn't had a finish since 2017. So both of these guys have not had finishes in their past five or six fights and in a few years. So I feel like that's why this line is so high. But Kelvin's also taking this fight on like two weeks notice, which that's a huge thing. Especially for a guy like Kelvin that has patently... Uh, when he gets out of camp he gets out of shape right there's there's like guys who when they're done with fights they kind of chill out you know they kind of eat right and then they get they gain like 10 15 pounds and then there's also guys that just stay in shape constantly and kelvin was known as the former right like like a uh, guy that once he's done fighting just kind of chills out you know just kind of takes some time off you know gains like it like a like few uh pounds but that was also just old kelvin like i don't know if kelvin is still that way but if we assume he he is that that means that his his cardio is really going to show in the fourth or like fifth round and i feel like once it gets to those rounds it's it's going to be really hard and uh yeah like and i think robert he like both of these guys have not gotten finishes in a while but i think uh because of that, it even strengthens my uh, thing because I feel like both of these guys are itching to get back to those finishing ways. And if any of these guys want a shot, they really need to finish a fight like spectacularly. So I think that they're both going to go for it. I see, I see Robert going in for the takedown not really getting it and then it just kind of being just boxing for most of the fight <clears throat> i could be uh wrong but that's kind of how i see it so those are my three bets just to run through them quickly 
We have Robert Whitaker versus Kelvin Gastelum, plus 112 to go under four and a half rounds. We have Andre Orlowski versus Chase Sherman, plus 112, under two and a half rounds. And we have Funky Ben Askren to, to win, plus 146. So every bet is an underdog bet. So if these win, baby, you'll... You'll make some fucking money. Uh, my current record is nine and six, which is not bad, right? That's not bad at all. That's like a sixty-six percent win rate, which that's what I'm. That's what I'm going for here, people. It's exactly what I am going for. Just be above sixty percent, because if I just hit that rate constantly. And in theory, if you bet on every single fight, then uh, at the end of this year, you will make out a decent chunk of uh, change. I should I should probably work out like how much I would be up, or like how much or just a person would be up if they bet like a hundred bucks on on each fight or something like that. The uh, next podcast like I may come through with. With those stats, that'll be interesting. Which, um, I kind of broke my rules a little bit because most of the time I, I don't like to pick guys to win. But this Ben Askren odds, they kind of just blew my fucking mind and they seemed way too good to not take them. So, yeah, so I broke those uh, rules. So, I guess I'll go through this card real quick. You have the return of Jeremy Stevens to lightweight. He's uh, taken a little time off here. Um, I think I think it was just because he had just had personal stuff going on, and but uh, he hasn't fought since about a year. It'll be three weeks to a year, so. And that last loss was against Cater, and that was his uh, fourth straight loss. So, and that Cater knockout was pretty brutal. That he hasn't been like finished like that since you know, like way way back in the day when like he was super duper young, right? So. That was that was probably the most brutal loss of his entire career because he was he lost three uh, straight and he was looking to gun back and then Cater just flatlines him man like that elbow was ridiculous I actually just watched that fight and oh my god man like that elbow it was so perfectly timed like Stevens was throwing I think it was like a like a right straight. And then Cater just threw at the same time, like, in, but he threw like an elbow, super close, and it just it just timed it perfectly. Caught Stevens first, dropped him, and honestly, the fight should have been stopped there, like, as because he dropped really bad, and like then he had to like actually get on top of him, and then all that whole thing, and then Jeremy Stevens protested it after, but it was like. I'm 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 sure that that's just because he's a tough guy and you know he wasn't completely out so you know he just saw the fight be stopped like and he was just immediately like what the fuck but I'm sure when he goes back and watch watches that tape that you know that stoppage was definitely good so he's looking to to uh, bounce back here a against your uh, car close who himself had had a pretty brutal knockout loss against uh Dariush who's about to fight Tony Ferguson. I forgot when. I think it's I think it's the Connor fight, right? I think I th I think they're they're on that card. But yeah, so Dariush knocked him out, which I think is the first time that he's ever been finished. Yep, that was the second time that he's lost and it's the first time that he's been finished. So both guys are looking to bounce back from KO losses. So, 
this could be a really good starting point for either one of these guys. Close has looked very good. He's beaten some really great guys right at that. This dude has, <laughs> I mean, like, since, since, like, his third fight, man, I mean, he was, he, he was, he, he was fighting legit people, right? So, like, this guy doesn't have a padded record, like, at all, and he, he beat a lot of great guys. So, I could definitely see close getting the, uh, win here, but Steven seems very hungry. He's, completely sober now he completely changed his uh life so who knows who knows like this should be a great fight but unfortunately this fight should be at the same time as like the uh jake paul fight which is like what dude like i want i would rather watch this but then i don't know it's just like i'll just have to have it like split screen just on one half of the screen, these fights, and one half of the screen, the fucking meme fights. So, uh, also, Pena is about to come back. The good old uh, violent Bob Ross. <laughs> he uh, also lost a couple straight here. Oh, he's lost two out of his last three. Uh, the last, his, uh, last loss was the first time that he's been finished against Kama Worthy. So he's looking to bounce back here against Alex Munoz, who I honestly don't know who this kid is. Um, he's only had one fight in the UFC against Hack Parast, and he lost. So, oh, but he, but he beat, oh, this is the guy that fought, um, actually Nick, uh, Newell, and then won, but, but then he didn't get the contract, because he kind of just grinded him out, and Dana hates those fucking type of guys, <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, so, that fight should, uh, be good, and then Abdul Hazak. Al Hassan, that uh, he's also making his return. I think this is his first fight back since uh, Chaos Williams. Yes, this is his first fight back. Him also, he got finished for the first time, and it was a brutal knockout, and it was in 30 seconds, man. Like, Chaos Williams got him with, like, the KO of the fucking year, man. That knockout was super duper brutal. So. And I'm a little worried that he's coming back too soon. So that fight was only five months back. Only five five months. So that means what? So like you rested for like two months and then been training for like three months. It's like that's not enough time for your brain to to a heal. Which I feel like that that's a lot of mistakes that a, that a lot of that a lot of guys make where they get knocked out very brutally like that and you need to give your your brain time to to uh, heal where you don't spar you don't get any contact to your head like at all right so a lot of guys do this because to get knocked out it's it really fucks with you it's 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 a difficult thing and like a lot of these guys just want to get right right back on it right like that's what's there and like dwell so they start sparring they come back with a quick fight and then that's how you diminish your uh chin that a lot of guys need to take their brain health more fucking seriously where <clears throat> I feel like when you get knocked out, how he got knocked out, minimum, you should do no sparring for six months, minimum. And you shouldn't fight for a year, minimum. That if you don't want that to be a long-lasting thing, that 
your your brain does heal, but it heals very slowly. So if you're getting sub can um sub can uh cussive blows then you're not letting your uh brain heal and you can there's a lot of bad things that can come from that but the most noticeable is that your chin will diminish if you don't give your brain time to fucking heal your chin will get worse so i'm kind of scared well not scared but you know i'm a little concerned that he's coming back too soon after a really brutal knockout but he's also a fucking beast so and it's the first time that he's ever been knocked out so it seems like he hasn't taken a ton of damage yet so i mean we'll uh we'll definitely see and uh he is fighting this guy, Jacob Malcoon, who this guy's only had five fights. I don't know why he's fighting this this dude after five fights. And Phil Hawes knocked this guy out in like 18 seconds. So I feel like um, this is probably a, a good guy to fight off of that comeback. And then this guy also got knocked out like six months back. It's like people need to give your brain time to uh, heal. But I think like a big part too is that these guys can't afford to not fight for like a whole year. That they don't make that much money that they could just sit out for like an entire year. And then just be like, oh, I'm fine. That a lot of these guys that be that before they get to uh, the fight, they have almost like n no money left. <laughs> to have to spend a lot on training in their camp and they have to bring in sparring partners and then on top of that you have your agent that like you need to give a cut to like you need to pay taxes and then on top of that you still have to pay rent and like you have to pay bills so it's like being a fighter is very expensive so a lot of these guys in the end they you know that they'll make thirty forty thousand dollars but but once you cut in taxes once you cut in the the agent from like forty thousand you're taking home like twenty five thousand then you have to pay for your gym you have to pay for sparring partners and all this shit so it's like that <clears throat> it gets gets it it can get very expensive then on top of that you have to pay to uh, like fly your like coach out and then a ho and like tell room which the UFC, I think, if I remember right, they they give you uh, uh, two hoa uh, hoa like tell rooms, one for your coach, and then and then one for you, and then they give you two extra flights on on uh, top of uh, your flight. So you get that covered, but a lot of people don't have two guys, right? Like a lot of people have a team of four or five. So it's like you, those are three extra tickets, right? If you need to get an extra ho, uh, like actually tell room, that's extra money there. So it's very expensive. So I feel like that's partly it too. That a lot that a lot of these guys can't afford to sit out for a year straight. So they can't let themselves properly heal. So, <clears throat> which is something that I want to touch on in greater D uh, like tail. Like I know that there's nobody listening at this point, but I'm but I'm gonna switch the the format of this podcast. Like for right now, it's like it'll just stick to this where I just talk shit and I just break down fights and then I give you my locks. But I realize that there's a hundred people that are doing that, and there's guys like Michael Bisbing and Chael Sonnen and and DC that are doing literally exactly the same thing that I'm doing and I realize that you know no fight fan no legitimate fan would would take what I'm saying over what what Bisbing's saying or over what Chael's saying or over what DC's saying so it's like so I realize that if, if I want to gain any steam this format is not going to work right so I realize that but what a lot of people aren't doing there's not a lot of people doing scripted produced storytelling 
within this sport and there's a million different million different stories there's a million different topics but it takes a lot of work right so i want to work on a bunch of them have them all stored up and then switch over and then i'll probably switch over to uh twice uh per month probably just because i want to give myself room to properly make these right so the content will be less but it'll be higher quality and it'll be good shit and it won't just be me here on the microphone stuttering and mumbling and talking shit like a fucking idiot so <clears throat> even though there's no one that will hear will hear this I'll just put it I'll just put it out there you know that this show will switch formats cuz I realize that that this is dog shit and then plus with my stutter Doing shit in one take is kind of, like, stupid because my stutter is a real pain, right? So switching over to scripted will be a lot easier because I could do a million fucking takes and it's not a pain in the fucking ass. Where this, it's, like, it's such a flow thing that if I stumble, if I stutter, it, it's, it's, it's more of a pain. It breaks the flow when I have to go go back and like redo portions but I realize that this is dog shit people and it will get better so just hang in there <laughs> uh yeah so I guess at that note I'm going to leave it here I'm sorry for being late for those five people that do actually listen but you know I thought it was important to still get this out so thank you if you've actually listened this far i love you you're the shit um i'll suck your dick <laughs> all right <laughs> okay that's fucking terrible that's yeah, fine people have a great weekend i shall see you monday deuces people